Hi, the year 2023 is smoothly coming to an end. This year has given us quite a few interesting games that you've probably heard about more than once. In this video, I want to tell you about some cool games from 2023 that likely slipped under your radar. I've tried to include representatives from various genres, so I hope everyone can find something interesting for themselves. I'll start with The Invincible, is a first-person science fiction thriller with elements of retrofuturism. The game is based on the cult novel The Invincible by Stanislav Lem. Set in a retrofuturistic universe with analog yet advanced technologies, the game follows the story of a scientist on a perilous mission to the mysterious planet Regis III. Players must locate the missing crew members using cutting-edge equipment while surviving the inhospitable and enigmatic planet filled with dark secrets and puzzles. The narrative unfolds in a non-linear and complex manner, offering a challenging experience where the player's choices, relationships, and persuasion skills directly impact survival. The game features a rich retrofuturistic setting, engaging gameplay, and a very interesting story. If you are a science fiction fan and you have rewatched the movie Interstellar several times with pleasure, then you just have to play this game. It would seem that gameplay-wise it is a walking simulator, but the atmosphere and the story create just an incredible interactive immersion. Outath is a classic survival game set in an unfamiliar world, a mysterious island in the middle of the ocean. Players are tasked with unraveling the secrets of this enigmatic place through exploration, gathering resources, and engaging in vital activities such as fishing. As players progress through the game and complete tasks, they earn experience points that can be used to enhance skills and unlock blueprints for constructing buildings, tools, and other objects. The ability to purchase neighboring islands adds an intriguing element to expand territory and fulfill ambitious settlement plans. In the quest for survival, players must explore the world, fight for resources, and develop their character by seeking food, water, weapons, armor, and other essential items. If you played Forager and you liked it, then take it without a doubt. It's basically the analog of Forager only in 3D. Planet of Lana is an exciting adventure platformer where players encounter a world attacked by lifeless machines along with a young girl Lana and her brave companion. This exciting game involves exploring a mysterious planet, battling robots, and solving challenging puzzles. One of the key elements of the game is the need for interaction between the heroine and her companion, who has unique abilities. Visually, the game delights with its beauty, the locations resemble watercolor paintings. However, platforming elements and puzzles often seem unoriginal. The plot is intriguing, but too convoluted. In general, if you like such games as Journey, Inside, Gree, or Limbo, this game will not leave you indifferent. Cuisina. This is an adventure roguelike, combining elements of RPG, arcade, and management of your restaurant. We will play as an adventurous woman who returns to her hometown and finds out that she inherited a small family restaurant, which is in debt. Now we have to develop it and pay off all the debts. For this we need to go to multi-story dungeons, in which we will fight with various monsters and extract ingredients from them. From these ingredients you will cook various dishes and serve them to visitors to your restaurant. At first there will not be many people, but over time we will improve our restaurant, increasing its size and decorate, making it more beautiful. Accordingly, its attendance will increase, bringing us more profit. If you played Moonlighter and liked it, I recommend this game too. These two games differ only in the fact that in Moonlighter we sold artifacts found in the dungeon, and here we will sell food. Moonstone Island is a captivating open-world life simulation game that combines elements of Pokémon and Stardew Valley, elevating the experience beyond expectations. As an alchemist undergoing training, you explore over 100 floating sky islands, engaging in various activities such as brewing potions, taming nature spirits, and participating in card-based battles. The game offers the familiar features of a farming simulator, including cultivating crops, interacting with villagers, mining, crafting, and more. However, Moonstone Island introduces a unique twist with spirits replacing traditional farm animals. These spirits, akin to Pokémon, add depth to the gameplay through card-based combat and strategic deck building. The enchanting pixel art style, coupled with well-executed mechanics, makes the game visually appealing and enjoyable. 
The expansive world includes diverse biomes, ancient temples, and challenging dungeons, providing a rich and immersive experience. Unraveling the mysteries of the islands and mastering alchemy adds an intriguing layer to the game. In conclusion, Moonstone Island is a must-play for fans of chill farming sims, dating sims, and exploration games. Sengoku Dynasty offers an immersive blend of genres, combining elements of role-playing, open-world exploration, city-building simulation, and life simulation with survival elements. Set in the turbulent times of feudal Japan, players can create and lead their own dynasty in both single-player and multiplayer modes, experiencing the game from either a first-person or third-person perspective. The game offers a rich experience with diverse activities, such as village management, exploration, and interaction with colorful characters. Combat with animals, particularly boars, presents a challenge requiring strategic maneuvering to avoid losing money and equipment upon death. The cooking mechanics work well, allowing players to assign cooks to fireplaces for food preparation. If you like games like Medieval Dynasty, I suggest you check out this game as well. The Iron Oath it is a turn-based role-playing game that players a huge and ever-changing world that includes 50 settlements in nine regions. Notably, all objects in the game are destructible, allowing players to rebuild cities to their liking beyond character management. Players must also handle the financial aspect, considering that heroes age, retire, or even die in battle. The storyline spans centuries, resulting in dynamic changes to the game world. Factions emerge and vanish over time, and mercenaries develop unique backstories influenced by preceding events. Although the current game version offers four classes, developers plan to expand to 12 classes, each with six unique active abilities and two passive ones, along with nine additional specializations in early development. The only critique is a desire for more endgame content, but the active development by the dedicated developers continues to enhance the game with regular updates. Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. This is an adaptation of one of the most popular modern board games, reimagining the legends of King Arthur. The game is a dark, first-person RPG adventure in the spirit of Dark Souls, where players explore open world, make decisions, and fight against different creatures. Despite being in early access, the game boasts good graphics, intriguing mechanics, and a compelling atmosphere of hopelessness. The plot is highlighted for its interesting take on the ruinous Avalon setting, promising more depth as additional areas are released. The map and locations showcase unique and well-designed points of interest. Combat variety is a strong suit, with different weapon types and unique abilities adding depth to the gameplay. I especially like the creepy dystopian atmosphere of the game. I recommend it to fans of Arx Fatalis and Dark Messiah. Despite the early access, the game is quite comfortable to play, I didn't find any critical bugs. Dungeons 4 is the fourth installment in the series, offering a real-time fantasy strategy and dungeon keeper simulator. Players take on the role of creating their own dungeon and managing the forces of absolute evil alongside the dark elf Talia in their battle against the forces of good. The game introduces numerous engaging mechanics, including the addition of new environmental elements like lava lakes. The game maintains its strong points, including a captivating plot with humor and unexpected twists. The revamped research tree changes in resource management during construction, and the replacement of units demonstrate the developer's commitment to enhancing gameplay dynamics. The introduction of alchemy and the exclusion of trap production contribute to the game's strategic depth. In conclusion, Dungeons 4 is recommended for fans of the series and those seeking a strategic and engaging dungeon management experience. Micro Civilization offers players a pixelated strategy clicker experience where they can explore, expand, exploit, and destroy. The game starts with non-linear population and economic growth, introducing government combinations and hundreds of unique heroes. Players can experiment with ability builds not only for combat but also for construction. The game's objectives include building a prosperous nation, and players have various methods to achieve this goal. Options range from oppressing people to focusing on productivity, attending seminars, and utilizing active and passive abilities. 
Technological advancements unlock upgrades, military units, bonuses, and new abilities in typical genre fashion. Challenges arise in population growth due to wars, social unrest, invasions, diseases, and disasters. Shadow Gambit, The Cursed Crew, is a new game from the creators of Desperados 3 and Shadow Tactics, Blades of the Shogun, set in an alternative golden age of piracy. The story unfolds over the dark Caribbean, ruled by inquisitors with a curse haunting lost souls and ghostly pirates searching for treasures. Players take on the role of the cursed pirate Aphia, seeking special black pearls and assembling a unique, undead crew with distinctive abilities. Facing the Inquisition, the heroes aim to acquire treasure through daring heists, assisted not only by deceased pirates but also by the Red Marley, a ghost ship with a soul. Her unique abilities are seamlessly integrated into the gameplay, responsible for save and load functions, breaking the fourth wall in an innovative manner. The game combines the madness of the anime One Piece with the atmosphere of Pirates of the Caribbean. The developers embraced creativity when designing the team's abilities, acknowledging the defiance of physics and logic within the game's universe. And Guard, this game takes us on a cartoon adventure. The game is set in the 17th century where the protagonist, an experienced swordswoman, fights the local tyrant, Count Duke, and his despotic guards. The plot unfolds both in narrative episodes and in arena battles, offering us a wide variety of adventures, from street fights to prison escapes and villa break-ins. While battles with hordes of enemies are commonplace in games, fencing represents a more specific theme. The developers have focused on this aspect by emphasizing strategic melee combat. Each enemy has a defense score, which encourages players to attack strategically because allowing them to fully recover means starting the fight all over again. Interaction with the environment plays an important role, offering options such as tipping barrels on guards or using the surroundings to gain tactical advantages. Like a Dragon, Ishin is a Yakuza series spin-off set in 1860s Kyoto. It follows samurai Sakamoto Ryoma's quest to find his father's killer, clear his name, and restore honor. The game reimagines familiar characters in new roles, providing a fresh yet connected experience. Despite the graphical upgrade on Unreal Engine 4, the core gameplay remains akin to the 2014 original. Combat introduces four fighting styles, and squad mechanics enhance strategy. The narrative, though not the series' best, blends historical drama with Yakuza's signature formula. The game includes enjoyable diversions like recruiting allies and cultivating a garden, offering a compelling experience for both series fans and newcomers. Bramble, The Mountain King, is a captivating adventure platformer with horror elements set in a dark fantasy world inspired by ancient Scandinavian folklore. Playing as Ali, the younger brother searching for his missing sister, the game takes you through diverse landscapes filled with mythic creatures and giant bosses. The narrative, narrated by a storyteller, weaves a dark fairy tale as the siblings journey through a mysterious realm. The detailed world features Scandinavian mythological beings, creating an atmospheric and varied experience. With well-implemented mechanics akin to Little Nightmares, the game offers engaging platforming challenges and diverse boss battles. Trine 5, a clockwork conspiracy delivers the anticipated adventure. The game boasts stunning visuals, showcasing vibrant landscapes and intricate details, making it a contender for one of the year's most beautiful titles. Across 20 levels divided into five chapters, the trio explores picturesque locations, introducing a steampunk touch to the familiar fairy tale aesthetic. The gameplay maintains the series' charm, allowing players to control the three characters individually in single-player or cooperatively in multiplayer. The puzzles evolve in complexity, requiring strategic thinking as the heroes gain new abilities. The diverse challenges keep the experience engaging, even if the overall formula remains familiar. Trine 5 successfully combines past ideas into a cohesive and enjoyable puzzle platformer, with refreshing variations that challenge players throughout the game. That's all, thank you for watching. The Image Game Channel was with you. Have a good day.